So this is what my hood looks like, so you guys know what I'm working on. It's on a low 16 foot. Ripped all the gauges out because they're junk. Got a bunch of bad power. This thing started on fire on Lake Michigan. So changing, getting rid of all the unnecessary electronics. Installing modern stuff. But the reason I'm making this is for a carburetor queen. So here's the first step. Take all these bolts out. After you get this cover off right here, take all of these bolts off. Careful when you're removing this last bolt because there's gaskets in here and you want to make sure that they don't break in half. So you just kind of carefully peel them off of there. Make sure they're all coming off nicely. There's also this hose at the bottom that comes disconnected from this nipple right here. Remember where that is. Next, I'm going to try to go along to each of the carburetors and take these nuts off. I'll stop and take a video if there is any problems. Just using a half inch wrench. Alright, after you get both sides all the way down loose, you just kind of wiggle them off because then you got a little more clearance room. Wiggle them off one by one, they're going to fall down. Just make sure that they don't twist when you're trying to get in there. Alright, I got all the nuts off. Just going to pull these off. There's a bunch of hoses, vacuum lines and stuff connected. So, take that off, that off, that off, that off. Careful with these T connectors. Just take all the hoses off the carburetors, get them off there. All right, now that they're off, I'm gonna carry them over to my workbench, pull out my ultrasonic cleaner. All right, now I got it on the workbench. Go through and remove all of these float pole screws. Be careful of these gaskets so you don't tear them. Just kind of peel them off really carefully three so there's like eight or 16 screws next you go through and remove all of these float bowl pins all three and it looks like there's a little spring or no that's just the needle okay i'll show you how to do one because you don't want to lose any of the parses or any of the pieces hey you yes you cut your teeth with your tongue first the top and then just lift straight up like that because hanging on the bottom is that needle. And just set those aside. And yep. Okay, so there's these gaskets right here. I had two of them stick on there and the third one stuck onto the float bowl. So I'm just going to transfer these over to the float bowl. Since they're not going in the ultrasonic cleaner, you don't want to put gaskets in the ultrasonic cleaner. So now I'm going to get the correct screwdriver and remove these three. Make sure you get a really wide one that fits perfectly in there because you don't want to gouge that up its brass. When you take them out, there's a little nylon gasket. So make sure that stays on there and look through. You should be able to see light through. I don't know if you can see that. Yeah, that looks good. So I'll just set that one aside. It looks good. Alright, I wanted to remove these jets, but there's this jet, weird jet in the middle, so I don't even want to try to mess around with that. So I'm going to flip them and take these three screws out. See, all three of these have these red washers. There's one in there, so I'm going to have to get a pick. Get a pick and pull that thing out of there. And I'm just putting those right above the other things. I'm going to take all three of these mixture screws here out. Um, 
If I can, I might just use a, a wrench to take the whole housing out and clean all of it. There's springs inside. You pull the first screw out and there's a spring in there. So make sure that comes with it. I am going to take the housings out. There are three eights. Careful, there's a little rubber o-ring. Mine almost came off. That's on the housings. Hey yo, Frenchy, what you know about Scottish wireless? All right, so now I can't get these off. So I'm just gonna soak them in the ultrasonic and then I'll spray them out with compressed air and carb choke cleaner after they soak. I'll show you my ultrasonic. So I made this out of an orbital sander, a wood frame, and then I linked it with this strapping stuff. And I linked this in with the strapping stuff too to hold it. And then over here, I put a, a light rheostat for lights in your house to dim it down because it's way too powerful. And in the top, I fill it up with water and then I pour enough simple green or purple power degreaser to turn it purple, basically, and make it foam. Um, yeah, let me plug it in. I gotta find an extension cord. Alright, got it plugged in, so I'm gonna take these, set them in there, and then down here, turn the real stat on. Get it to a good frequency. Now while this is doing this, I'm going to go take something else off of the engine that I'm going to clean while this soaks. Okay, so I'm going to take this off because this is a fuel priming solenoid. So when you're starting it and cranking it, this delivers more fuel to the carburetors for first startup. Um, so, and I know that there's a screen in here and this diaphragm also goes bad, but I could probably save the diaphragm and just clean the screen and all the ports. Take this out, clean it. I bet that that'll help a lot. And then I can also, now I know that I can spray starter fluid into here. When I'm trying to get the engine started, I can spray it into there. So, when you take it off, just make sure you remember where these wires go. There's only a couple of them. And remember which one, the T online goes on the bottom. Might be different, there's two. Okay, I got this whole assembly pulled off. It was bolted on like, like that. And all these went over to the carburetor. Carburetors, or maybe the intake. Figure that out when I put it back on. Um, take these four off, and then that probably comes off. Careful, there's a gasket right here. Make sure it peels off evenly instead of like, coming off all wonky. Okay, so this is the diaphragm. It came off on this side for me, and I just pulled it right off of the top. So I'll set that aside. This is the it's the part of the solenoid that comes up. The spring. I think there's another spring in there. Yep, and there's that filter. So yeah, this spring goes right here. So I'm going to spray, take the pistols off, I'm going to spray in there, all around in there, probably going to spray that off with air too, spray everything with air, all this with air, I'm going to spray all these lines and make sure that there's air coming out. Same with these, I want to make sure that there's air going through. I'll take these off after I clean this part and get it put back together. Um, yeah, so I'm going to clean this and I'll come back to this piece with a video. Okay, got this back together. I'm going to go in here now and I'm going to take this off. Just do it. 
to lay that side down so I remember. That just slides out. I've heard you should replace those and I can see a little bit of fuel. You see how it's dirty right here? That means that some's probably getting past there. I think that means that there's a vacuum leak too. Um, you know, I bet that this doesn't leak too much because it gets clamped on there, but I might go get a new O-ring for this. You know, I might go get new O-rings for these if I can find them too. I think that these gaskets will probably be alright. I'll just put them back in there like that. So yeah, I'm gonna go to the hardware store. Well here, this is how I check this. Just blowing it, make sure there's air coming up. Block these off. Put that blown in here. Alright, those are all clear. Um, that's as much as I'm going to do with that. I'm going to go get new O-rings for these. While this continues to wobble, and then uh, I'll throw this back on after. You'll see. Alright, so I went to AutoZone and got new O rings. This was the package 80,000 part number, Dorman. And that gave me the perfect. O-rings for all of these orifices for the mixing screws and the right O-ring for this electric primer. So I'm going to clean all this up, put this back on with this circle facing down like it was, or up, and then that'll go on there. After I put all this back in, Yeah, there's a quick disassembly and assembly. Alright, so I'll put this together with these four screws, and I'll be back. Alright, I got this back together. Um, you have to put this in first, and while you're squeezing it down, there's a little notch that comes up through the gasket, and you have to line it up with this, because that's what holds it in. Yeah, so I'll put this aside. And then I'll start to take the carburetors back together. I'll shut this off, get the carburetors up here, and I'll be back. Okay, so I pulled them out of the cleaner, brought them over somewhere where I don't mind getting stuff gross, and sprayed inside of that, inside of there, at angles to get out all that stuff, inside here, inside there, sprayed this screen out, sprayed that out, Spray that, spray in there towards those, um, spray that right there, that's important. Any little hole that doesn't, that's not just threads. Then, I'm actually going to put a little bit of WD-40 on the butterfly valve. Any kind of oil would work. Two-stroke oil would probably be best, but whatever. After I sprayed all these out, I rinsed it with water because I didn't want that brick, that carburetor cleaner to be sitting on here too long. This just comes on like this. Okay, so first thing, I'm going to go and install this. I'm going to install these jets right here. Okay, I'll be back. And I'm going to go through and install all the float balls. I'll do one so you guys can see what it looks like. I'll just take this one off. Okay, so I'm going to hold it like this. Get this thing kind of so it's on there. 
right in the center just so you feel like it's not going to fall off and then lower it into the hole get your pin one side's bigger it looks like it's flanged so I'm going to put it so the flange ends up there pop it in. After that, you go and take this carburetor bowl, make sure your gasket's here, and your gasket's all the way around. Look where it lines up. Probably could have put that on first before I put the float bowl on. That'll work. And then after that, you go and reinstall all the flow bolt screws. I'll just do this one so you guys can see. There's four of them. One, two, three, four. Okay. Okay. Got all those on. Gonna put these orifices back on. I'll probably just screw these all the way in. So I'm gonna screw this all the way in until it seats out and then I'm gonna pull it back out one and a half turns because this is the mixture screw and then when I get to the lake I'll tune it and you just I'll I'll show I'll put another video up when I get to the lake that shows how to tune um but it's a good starting point two turns out because the mixture is just a little bit rich up from completely lean so it'll probably start like that and then I can tune it up to the right tune. All right, so I'm gonna put this all the way in, one and a half out. Then I'm gonna install this um, right here. And the last screw installs back here. And I'll just do that to all three of these. Okay, so I'm Back at the boat, got the carburetors all put together. About to put them on. Gonna put this on first. Got it like that. This is the ground, goes on when you attach the bolt here. This is power, goes right here. And then the bolt's on. And then when I put the carburetors on, I'm just gonna get the bolts snug and I'll stop there and come back. Okay. Got the carbs just on there loose. Um, got this back on. The tubes come through behind the carbs. There's one T where that T was. That's the bottom one. It's right here. Goes to that nipple. Then this one is the second nipple up right there. And this long one is the third nipple up. Then this there's this T with bigger hoses that goes in the fuel line there and then these are the fuel lines for the carbs this one goes into the T second one and then third one I'll do that and I'm actually gonna put really really small zip ties smaller than that on each one where it connects and zip tie it down super tight um, yeah, I've already checked that they're clear, so now I need to make sure that they're not going to leak. So I'm going to zip tie all those, and I'll be back. I got all of these small tubes connected coming from the primer over here. Now I'm going to tighten these up, then I'm going to put all these on, make it a little less stuff to get around. After that, all you gotta do is put this cover back on, make sure that this gasket right here looks alright. Yeah, and then that's all. Just bolt that on, bolt that on, and you're done. Then you just have to tune it when you get to the lake, which I'll make another video about after I sort through that mess. Alright, peace out guys, see ya.